Hey guys, in the last lesson, I showed you how to play out over a one chord vamp, which was D Dorian. And we talked about some of the phrasing and the rhythmic aspects. And the way I showed you guys how to do it was by moving up a half step and then back down. And in this lesson, I'm not going to introduce any new concepts. I'm going to take the same concept of moving up a half step to sound out. And I'm going to show you guys how to apply it over the tune Stella by Starlight. Uh, of course, you can do this over whatever tune you want, but I just chose Stella because I thought it would be fun to do an example over it. So what I've done is I've just set my camera up and I played a few choruses of Stella by Starlight. And I took what I thought was the best one and I've transcribed some parts. And we're just going to go through them and analyze them and see what I did. So check it out. Here it is. This is the first four measures of my solo. Before I do any analysis, I'm going to play it for you one more time, just this clip, so that you have it fresh in your ears. So here it is. All right, I'm just gonna tackle this bit by bit. On the first chord, E minor seven flat five, I'm not going out at all. I'm playing straightforward E Locrian, uh, just key of F. And then on the A7 flat 9, I'm using A altered scale. That is a very in sound for that chord. Um, so I started up on the C, which is a sharp 9, and then I walk down in altered scale. And then the next bit is where I go out. So here we have circled in red where I have gone out. The scale choice for those two chords is pretty much just C Dorian. You know, you can call it F Mixolydian for the second chord, but it's the same thing, you know. Um, I'm not really thinking of it as two different things. I'm just thinking of that whole block basically as C minor Dorian. So what I've done is I played my first four notes just walking straight up a C Dorian scale. And then I hit that F on my pinky and if you go back to the video, you'll see I actually slide my pinky up and I hit that F sharp with my pinky. And that F sharp is where I have slipped into a C sharp Dorian scale. And I walk right back down my Dorian, my C sharp Dorian, and I'm out right there for four notes. And then I land right back on the C, which at that point, that note is the fifth of F and I play a straightforward little uh, thing that's right back in the key and I resolve it smoothly to the next chord. So in the last lesson, all of the examples were resolving on beat one. And to be honest, I was kind of planning on doing that for this one, but you know, you start playing and stuff happens and I kept this because I thought it sounded good. So. You know, I guess the lesson here is not everything is as clean as I might like it to be. Sometimes my ear takes over and, you know, my fingers do something that I wasn't planning on. Um, but that's kind of how music is, especially at fast paces like this. Um, so anyway, that's my first four bars. I just went out a little bit. I kind of like to work my way into this. Um, you'll notice I didn't start playing out like on the first measure. Even usually, this is probably something I would save for like my second or third chorus or something. This, you know, it's out is something that most people work into. Um, I generally don't do it this early, but you know, that's what this lesson is about. So I had to throw it in as soon as I could. So there it is. Now that you guys see what's going on and I have it circled in red where I'm going out, I am going to play this clip for you one last time try to feel that tension there's like a it's like it pulls at your chest for a second when I go out and then it lets you go a second later um, I think it's a really nice feeling as I've talked about in previous videos this hearing it aspect and recognizing it I think is hugely important so here it is one last time <laughs> Like I just did with the last one, I'm going to play it real quick and then I will talk about it and play it again. So here we go. Uh, 
Okay, here I am playing very in on the first two chords. F minor, I'm playing Dorian, B flat, Mixolydian. So those two bars are just straight up in the key of E flat, and I'm playing, you know, I'm mostly just playing off chord tones. And then where I go out, you'll see here I have circled in red the third measure, E flat major seven, I'm playing a half step up. I'm playing E major seven. So I think this is probably the cleanest example that I played in this solo because I'm resolving it right on beat one, which is something I talked about in the last lesson, and the last lesson had examples that did that. So it resolves right onto the third of the next chord, and I'm playing a really in line on A flat 7 sharp 11. I'm playing Lydian dominant over that chord, which I think this chord, the A flat, is really important to this tune. So that's why I didn't touch that chord and went out on the different chord. So one thing I think that really makes this work well is that I don't stop. I'm playing so many wrong notes over E flat major 7 that had I stopped and landed on any of them, it would not be pleasant to the ears because they're all going to sound really harsh. Um, but since I went through them quickly and resolved it smoothly, that is what really makes this work. And in, it's just a little bit of tension um, and then it's gone. So that's all I really have to say about this four measures. Now I'm going to play it again, try to feel that tension, um, absorb what it sounds like. So here it is. Here is the final clip that we're going to talk about. It's the third set of four bars, so here it is. Over that first chord, I'm playing straight up B flat major seven. Nothing out there, although I think that would have been a great place to go out. Um, but I didn't do it, so what are you going to do? And then over the 2-5 leading to D minor, I play a very in 2-5 lick. Actually, that's all chord tones, so obviously not going out there. Um, and just a word about that. My preference is to play very, very in and then have it sound very, very out when I go out. I don't really like there to be much ambiguity in this aspect of my playing. I know there are some guys who like to choose scales that have a lot of in notes and some out notes. I'm not one of those guys. My preference is kind of that I like it to be like really dramatic. I like it to sound really in when I'm in and really out when I'm out. Um, so it kind of slaps you in the face and then goes back in. Um, don't, you know, don't think that you have to be that way just because I am, because there are some really great players who don't do that. Um, but for what it's worth, that's my preference, and that's kind of what I'm going for here. Um, okay, moving on to the D minor chord. I'm playing a half step above that chord, E flat minor 7, and then I actually resolve it back into the key on beat 4, and I made a mistake with my red box, so my apologies. The box should not extend to include that last F um, because that's where it resolves back on beat four there. And then I play a pretty straightforward B flat minor seven to E flat seven two five line, and I'm on to the next segment of this tune. Here are those four bars one more time. All right, I was too lazy to transcribe the rest of my solo, so that is as far as we're going to analyze. I hope you guys got some good examples to practice and that you kind of just got a basic idea of how I like to play out over chord changes. Before I sign off, I'm going to play this whole clip one more time with the music scrolling by just so you can hear it and see it one last time with the red boxes around the out parts. And if you enjoyed this video, please click subscribe so that you don't miss any future lessons. 
and please like and comment and send me an email with any ideas you have for future lessons or comments or questions. I always respond to all of them um, and I enjoy getting them. So thanks for your emails and I will see you guys next time.